Well good morning folks and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another scenery review for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Welcome back to Croatia. Seems I'm spending a lot of time in this country lately but the scenery that's coming out was, is really quite impressive. You are looking at Zadar or Zadar International Airport in Croatia. This is a new scenery produced or available through Orbix and produced by developer Rasha Tukakov. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, it's a fairly big scenery, quite extensive. He's done the airport fairly close to reality. The only thing I can see that's not really done as well is they're missing some trees and foliage which would really set the airport off. Um, and the buildings aren't done inside but that's not an issue um, visually it's very very nice beautiful location um, and in the real world a fairly popular airport to fly into even though it's seasonal the download side is so it's the download size is 823 megs and it installs to 1.56 gigabytes um, Prices, okay, 14 euros and 10 cents, these are approximate, um, or 16 dollars 61 cents US, or 12 pounds and 5 pence UK. It's available through Orbix. Um, we are going to look at two things here. Um, we're going to look at the airport in depth, obviously, this is the main review and the scenery, um, but um, Russia has also done some points of interest in the city. Now, um, Zadar is known as a port and known for its many marinas and we'll take a whiz over later in the review and have a look because they are really nice and he's added a few little bits and pieces but I also have to think this is yet another place where you need to get a helicopter or a slow flow aircraft out and go and have a check out the coastline. It's a beautiful part of the world. So thank you for joining me. Um, let's start with the scenery review and get into it proper. Okay, so here we are then, Zadar. Let's have a look at um, some history. International Airport serving the city of Zadar in Croatia, which is located 5 miles or 8.5 kilometers west of the airport. Uh, the city is located um, west of the airport, out on the, on the coast. Um, they built in the 1930s. The airport had commercial flights operated by Italian airline Alla Littoria from Rome and over the years has become Croatia's fourth largest airport. The airport actually opened in 1968. So the airport is a mix civilian and military airport and home to the Croatian Air Force. If you look in the distance there you can see the uh, water bomber aircraft and the military apron which we'll look at during the view is down there. The passenger figures, well we have figures for 2019, uh, at the time it was um, Croatia's fourth largest airport, they were dealing with over 800,000 passengers and over two and a half tons of freight. The airport also used to feature a public road crossing a taxiway which was a first, but as part of Croatia's accession to the EU this road was closed in April 2010 for safety. 2013 Zadar became a Ryanair base with the Boeing 737-800 based there on the airport and operating to several destinations from this base. Okay, much of Zadar's traffic is seasonal but the airport does serve eight destinations with Ryanair, at least it did before the Covid hit. Lauda Air, which was the airline owned by Niki Lauda, did announce plans to base two Airbus A320s there for the summer season of 2021, but the airline has ceased operations and much of its um, infrastructure was absorbed into Austrian airlines. Currently, up until Covid, um, over 16 airlines operate and into and out of Zadar, many on a seasonal basis, including EasyJet, Lufthansa, Scandinavian International Airlines, Transavia and Vueling or Vueling. As of 2019, we've got passenger figures. 801,347 passengers were processed that year and over 2,500 tonnes of cargo. As I mentioned before, the scenery has got custom points of interest built into the city. The developer, Rasha, has done a little bit of work over there and I've had a pretty little scan and it does look very, very nice. 
So Zadar has two main runways. Runway 3113 is 8,202 feet long or 2,500 meters and it's concrete. Um, they have high intensity runway lighting, um, high intensity airfield lighting system as well, runway end identifier lights and PAPIs or PAPIs, precision approach path indicators. Runway 0422 is 6,600 and 6,562 feet long or 2,000 meters and it's asphalt and also has all the same lighting and the pappies as um, runway 3113. You have an ILS and an RNAV approach on runway 13. Um, you also have um, runway, uh, an RNAV RMP approaches and VOR approaches 104 and 31. You can depart on runway 22, but you can't land. There are no approaches listed for runway 22 due to the mountainous terrain northeast of the airport, rising to 8,000 feet. And if you look in the distance there, we're looking towards the west. The city of Zadar is out here, just about five miles away. And as I said, we will look at the position, uh, uh, the, the points of interest that um, Russia is included in the scenery. If I look to the northeast there you can see the mountainous terrain which prevents you landing on runway 22. Although you can depart from runway 22 there are SIDs listed um, but the terrain rises to over 8,000 feet so you sort of have to be careful. So there we are then, a bit of history and um, details about the airport and, and it's, it's a beautiful location right on the Adriatic, very popular airport and nice to see this being done so well for Flight Simulator 2020. So that's being said, let's get down and have a close-up look at um, some of the features of the airport. So we'll start with a military apron. As I said, um, Zadar is a, a mixed-use civilian military airport. Here we're coming up towards the military side of things. It's also got its own control tower. Um, and as you can see, very nice, um, looking quite basic. But I'm from the, from the images I've looked at of the real airport, this is fairly accurate. Um, some nice models that actually sit on the ground, which I'm pleased about. As you can see, the aircraft models are quite nicely detailed. They sit on the ground, they don't sink into the tarmac. And you've got some cargo bits and pieces there being loaded. There's the main, one of the main, two main hangars. You can have a look inside and see if there's anything built inside. Most of the airport hasn't been done inside, so I'm not expecting there to be any in here, but we'll have a look. So as you can see, no inside detailing, not even a roof or anything, which is okay, it's fine, uh, it's not really necessary. And they're looking out to the apron. So that's the military control tower on this side of the airport with its own fire service down there on the left. Um, again, nice, really nice looking, um, the building is pretty much as it appears in the real world from the research and pictures that I've looked at. Um, it's all crisp, no blurring textures, it's done, it's done very nice and it has the right amount of age, I think that's the best way to put it. Since this has been here a long time, it was a military airport before civilian use was updated and improved over time. Here you can see some nice aircraft here along with the other military hangar there to the right and some helicopters which appear to be similar to the Heinz. Very nicely done. Yeah, very nice little models. Nothing to write home about. Um, not much more detail, but they're good enough. There's some of the jets. I think they're Sukhois. I'm not sure. But uh, typical Croatian Air Force, from the, again from the research I've done. So extending further on um, from the military hangar, we go across to where the um, water bombers are based. As you can see, these are the typical um, 
water bombers that are found at many of the Turkish airports as well. Uh, nicely detailed, uh, look exactly like the real thing. Very nicely done. Whole airport layout here it looks it looks very nice, and again it looks really close to the real thing. I will put up a photograph that I found that shows the airport from above. And we can do a quick comparison. But visually very nice. Everything looks fairly basic, but um, it's, it's nice. It works and the, it looks better than the default. So no arguments there. Got another big hangar here to the right, we can have a quick look inside. And once again, no internal work. So that takes care of the military apron and the additional parts on the airport. Let's have a close look now at the main terminal and the, and the hub of this uh, great little scenery. So as you can see, it looks really nice airside. The uh, ground markings are excellent. The right amount of um, scuff marks have been added. Again, looking across the ramp there, um, I've actually checked this with images. The uh, ground markings, ramp areas are accurately laid out as they should be. So a little run across the airside front of the terminal. Nicely done, some animated people there. It looks really nice. So there you can see the fire station, the main fire station for the airport. A guy animated in the yellow jacket there. Just take a slow track to the right here, back across the airside point where we came. That I think is a VIP building, not certain, can't find much information about it, but I know there's supposedly a VIP building here. There's your control tower. Um, I have looked inside these buildings, they have not been developed inside. So there's a nice little open air point restaurant there for you to look at. Just tracking across the air side part of the terminal there and as you can see some animated people beautifully done looks really nice be interesting to see what all this all looks like at night got the flags um, as I've said in many other reviews I'm all about ambience and atmosphere and this has it it's it's nice it's very nice couple of static aircraft there. And as you can see we've got animated people, which is a nice touch. So let's cross the barrier like we can to land side. I really like this. Um, he's done a nice little job here. Land side is nicely, arguably more developed than the air side bit is. So we've got a couple of buses there, nicely detailed people. Um, these people aren't animated, but they are look they look really nice. And there's the same kind of restaurant that you have um, land side, which is a nice touch. So tracking across the land side part of the terminal, again I've had a look at the, the real images of the real airport and this is very accurate. Again beautifully done, the foliage is nice, um, there are 
bits and pieces of foliage that are missing but just beautifully done very nice clean crisp textures beautiful flowers there again you've got this restaurant you've got a waitress there very nice so we're inside the terminal as you can see no development inside but that's fine out across the car park we've got a lorry park to the left there cars are good well detailed properly parked nothing missing again lovely detail fuel trucks over there and tracking back across the car park very nice indeed really can't wait to fly into this place there's the boundary fence and that's looking down the main road into the airport there and you've got the road that goes into the airport from the other direction to the right so I just want to go down this tunnel and see what if anything there is this I believe was the road that crossed the taxiway that is now closed I think well, it may just be a drainage ditch so there's the other end and I'm thinking this is the road that crossed the taxiway that was closed and you've also got the concrete boulders here and here to prevent access so I think what they've done is they've completely separated this to land side and here you've got your boundary fence so this is probably um, the road that they were forced to close when they entered the EU so we've got some building work going on over there, construction vehicles which are nicely done. The apron sign there, nicely done, very clear. And we're looking back on the main terminal there. Right, so let's have a look at dusk and see what this looks like and see what the lighting, ambient lighting looks like. Okay, there we are. It's just below or just before 6 p.m. local time. The sun's just about to go down, and as you can see, some of the airport lighting has started to come on. You've got um, lights above the tarmac there, which are bright, but they're not actually showing any light on the tarmac yet. That may change as we go into darkness, full darkness. As you can see, we've got green centerline taxiway lights. We have the blue airfield boundary lights, which are common at many airports. The signage is lit and looking out towards the runway there again taxiways lighting ground lighting is excellent leading to the runways and leading off it and while we're here talking of runways so just looking down runway 31 which is an RNAV or a BOR approach the other end has the ILS as you can see we have the high intensity runway lighting system the runway end identifier lights which are here and precision approach path indicators here and the runway itself is well defined and well lit and just looking at runway 22 there you can see it's well lit and it's got the end identifier lights but there are no approach lights because you do not um, approach runway 22 you're going to take off from it so we are looking to the north um, <coughs> runway 04 um, which has the um, full approach lighting there, Pappies, high intensity runway lights and the end identifier lighting so looks good there so before we switch to night mode there you can see the hint of lighting beginning to come on here you got the um, the lighting in the car parks that, will, that look as though they're about to light up there's a nice glow on the buildings from the sunset, very impressed with that so let's go to night time and see how much development's been done with night lighting. 
So here we are, getting close to 20 past 7 in the evening local time. The moon's up. Um, night lighting doesn't look too bad. Um, just before I carry on, I might mention that I did experience the um, bug with update 6 or update 5 where the lighting goes up into the top half of the sky and it all looks a bit weird. Just for those of you who are watching, there is a fix until the new update fix, the hotfix comes out. And the fix to stop that is to go and change your render scaling from 200 down to 100. And that will get rid of it, but it actually won't affect the visuals that much. As you can see, no real change. Um, visibly, it looks really, really nice. All of a sudden, the ground lighting that was all over the place that was being reflected up in the sky is no longer there because I've turned the scaling down from 200 to 100. So that's the fix for the moment until the hot fix comes out from Asobo, which I believe is due out um, early tomorrow morning, 19th, so 18th of September. So here we are looking at the same shot from Landside again. As you can see, lighting looks adequate, very nice. Let's get down and close out to the terminal over the car park and see how it looks. So we're going over the car park here, approaching the land side part of the terminal. Lighting looks very nice and the stand lighting in the car park looks excellent. Okay, you still have these floating bits and pieces, but actually the lights work the way they should. So here's the front of the terminal. Quite nicely lit, very nice effect there. And just looking the other way, as you can see, lighting looks lovely. Buildings, even the bus is lit. And there's the canteen or the restaurant that um, we saw earlier. It's uh, just pleasantly lit. So let's go airside, have a look, see from airside. So here we are looking from airside towards landside. As you can see now we've got the apron fully lit up as it should be. Um, so there clearly is a point which the lights on the um, airfield apron come on to their full extent. Um, another thing I like, pretty much every vehicle we're looking at has also got its lights on. Not just the obstruction lights which are the amber turning rotating lights. But its main lights, even the static there has lights on it. Looking the other way is the fire station. Um, again, lighting is just the right amount. Looks really lovely. So I'm just looking out of the taxiway leading out to where the runway is, and you can see um, good signage, good lighting. It looks really dark, but you will find your way quite easy because the lighting on the taxiways is adequate. It is more than enough that's more than is required. Very pleasant. Visually very nice. And as you can see, another nice touch there, you've got the flashing red lights on top of the control tower and on top of the main terminal, which essentially just um, show the height restrictions and danger to low-flying aircraft or helicopters. And we'll just do a quick run down towards the military apron just to have a look at the lighting there. Okay, we've got one main light. The rest of the apron there is not lit, but it's adequate. There are some touches on the buildings. So that's looking at the military apron, which is pretty much dark. And a quick look at the taxiway lighting signage as well. Very nice indeed. So let's have a look at dawn, and then we'll go in and have a look at the city. Right, so it's 10 to 6 in the morning local time. As you can see, the main lights are on, but everything's beginning to change. That's the main terminal, so it's bathed in the uh, sunrise. And as you can see, we still have lights here in the car park, the landside car park, which I think is a nice touch. They're just the right amount during the night. They look brilliant. They look excellent. And here, just as dawn's going and everything's beginning to change, they're still on and again, just the right amount to show you that they're working. Really nice touch. Okay, so we're back to midday again. There's the airport in all its glory. Um, very nice. I'm really pleased with it. Um, there are, according to um, the photograph I've seen, just a, a couple of trees and foliage which are missing, which probably could have been planted to uh, just completely finish this off in a way. 
Um, inside the buildings, so you've got a, quite a few good sceneries now where they're not doing internals and you've got some of the really brilliant sceneries where they are developing pretty much everything. So you've got two types of classification really for Flight Simulator 2020. Um, but neither of those two classifications um, are in any way bad, shape or form, bad at all. Um, even airports where they've not done the inside of the terminals. Zadar here is a beautiful airport and a lovely location, beautifully done. Full advantage has been taken of um, the capabilities of the Asobo product and um, the developers done a great job. So that's the airport, so let's now go and have a look at the city. So here's the main road that comes out of the airport, goes all the way down towards the city. It's quite a long drive, but it's um, 25 miles away. But as you can see, the road e e e it exists. Um, it's not been, as far as I can see, it's not been completely covered by trees, which is good. just thought I'd do this so you could see as we get so many situations where roads are completely covered by trees because it's not been done properly and as you can see a beautiful rural area here there's the main motorway and there you can see the city in the distance the motorway goes in very nice indeed it's just beautiful, very nice. So I've deviated slightly from that road towards the city. I've gone down a little bit further along the coastline. I wanted to show you these marinas and much of this is default. But as you can see, um, Zadar is known for its marinas. And the coastline is just very, very pleasant. Again, certainly worth a helicopter tour, and I might even do that in another video. So now we're coming up on the city. Uh, you can see the um, fuel area there. Very nice here, they've just done some nice little touches. I don't think that um, they've gone overboard here, but they have done some bits and pieces just to make this look a little better. We've got a stadium over there to the right, which we'll have a look at shortly. Nice cruise ship there. Not sure it should be looking that it's sort of sitting in that position because it's partially blocking the harbour. But it um, looks nice. And again, if you look to the left, you could see some cathedral type buildings. Got some boats in the harbour there. And again, you can see this place is full of marinas. It's well known for its um, marinas. As you can see, it just looks beautiful. Very, very nice. One or two buildings have been done. There's that uh, stadium. Very pleasant indeed to look at. Very nice, wherever you go, just beautiful. Certainly worth coming out to explore, I think. So just thought we'd have a look at the harbour and the city at night. See the lights turned on, see how, what the effect is. Very nice indeed. So going down through the harbours again. It looks lovely. Very, very nice.
quite a bit of enhancement um, has certainly it looks as though they've really done something a bit with the lighting here because it looks really really crisp so here you can see a couple of the churches and ornate buildings down there to the left and again the lighting brings them out cruise ships are lit and turning back inland very nice just really really nice <clears throat> And there you can see the stadium below. Very pleasant. Just really, really good. So there you are folks, Zadar International Airport in Croatia, another airport out on the coast, famous for its um, marinas, lots of seasonal travel into this airport. Um, produced by a gentleman called Russia Tukakov, and released through Orbic Simulation Systems and um, putting the prices up and the download size now. Another beautiful little airport um, typically showing off some of the best of Flight Simulator 2020. Um, no real shortcomings to speak of. Um, some missing foliage which um, could have enhanced it a little bit more and um, you can decide whether or not you think maybe the buildings inside should have been developed a bit would have been it would have like in most cases it would turn this airport from a beautiful airport into an absolutely fantastic airport but um they're very pleased with it um and uh, just a quick disclaimer i bought this i paid for it i wasn't given it in any way uh, all of my reviews are the opinions on my own and in no way influenced by anybody with it, whether i was given the scenery or whether i bought it but i paid for this and um i'm very happy with it do I like it? Yes, I do very much. We've got uh, at least four really good airports in Croatia now, along with Split, Dubrovnik, um, <clears throat> and the other one which escapes my memory. And uh, yes, very, very nice. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the review and found something useful. Um, anything you'd like to comment on, please put some comments below. I'm happy to respond to comments from all of my viewers. And uh, yeah. So thanks for joining me. This is Lee, Virtual Airline Pilot. I will see you in the next video and um, have a great weekend. So I'll say bye for now.